Private 5G is a very hot development right now in the communications industry and one that is set to expand the connectivity capabilities and enhance the productivity of many enterprise users, as well as enhance their collaborations with service providers. HPE is set to play a major role in this sector as it has 5G capabilities, relationships with hundreds of service providers, and one of the market's leading enterprise Wi-Fi offerings, courtesy of its Aruba brand. But to find out more about HPE's private network strategy, I'm talking today with Stuart Strickland, HPE Fellow and VP of Wireless Innovation in the CTO team at Aruba, a Hewlett Packard enterprise company, and Lee Hines, Technology Strategist at the Communications Technology Group, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So thanks to both of you for joining us today. Um, so given that HPE has a strong position in Wi-Fi and has just launched a private 5G offering, how do you see enterprises adopting and using such private networks? Stuart, let's start with you. Thanks. Um, so private 5G and enterprise Wi-Fi are complementary offerings. Um, private 5G will almost always be deployed in conjunction with enterprise Wi-Fi and fixed networks or where Wi-Fi is already in place. So our challenge is to deliver the benefits that are specific to 5G in a package that allows the enterprise to treat it as a simple extension of those existing networks. And these, these benefits are substantial, but they're also typically linked with some very specific business requirements. So sometimes uh, an enterprise will need uh, to segregate sensitive or mission critical traffic into the, the, the 5G leg. Sometimes they'll need wider area coverage than they could typically get from a um, Wi-Fi deployment, um, or they may be looking for deterministic handovers and mobility at speeds that are much greater than the pedestrian velocities that um, Wi-Fi was designed for. Um, and then there are times when an enterprise is looking to fill gaps in cellular coverage, and this is where a private 5G solution could support um, inbound roaming from subscribers on various public networks um, much more cost effectively than they might be able to do, say, with a distributed antenna system. So um, when we think about, when we think about private 5G, I think it's tempting to look at the technology and to put the emphasis on the 5G part. But when many enterprises hear the expression private 5G, what appeals to them is that it's private, that it's under their control, that it's distinct from and independent of the surrounding public network. So one of the th challenges that we face is balancing that interest in control against the inherent complexity of a cellular architecture that's frankly unfamiliar to most enterprise network uh, engineers and administrators. Um, and this is one of the challenges that we aim to meet in, in this offering. Okay, great. Thanks, Stuart. And, and Lee, what's your view on how enterprises are going to adopt these networks? Well, certainly, uh, as Stuart indicated, uh, we are seeing more of a drive of the enterprises towards an elevated view of the communication needs of their use cases. Uh, predominantly, enterprises are interested in use cases that are associated with business value that they can bring to uh, their own type of market environments. And they don't like the idea of a, a discrete communication factor being either a limitation or an isolated area that they perform their business functions within. Uh, very simple types of uh, communication needs come in the form of neutral hosting, uh, 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 Wi-Fi offloading, you know, they're just the basics themselves. But again, it's not necessarily a, a direct peering of a 5G network architecture. It's simply a communications architecture. And what we found is that the manageability characteristics, the subscriber characteristics, uh, the reporting characteristics between different types of network types, uh, it's not really that relevant to the needs of the enterprise itself. And as Stuart indicated, we need to find ways to make the manageability of this as, as simple as possible and as effective as possible so that we can continue to proffer the type of communication needs and ultimately the compute needs that the enterprise has to have in order to be successful with their business. Okay, so uh, a lot of advantage there for enterprises, but how do you make Wi-Fi and 5G work together? Uh, Stuart, let's start with you again. Yeah, so it's it's important to understand this problem from at least three perspectives. There's 
the operational challenges of network administrators as they deploy and configure and maintain now multiple heterogeneous uh, networks. There's the experience of the end user or the client device on the 5G network and as it traverses between the Wi-Fi and the 5G network. And then thirdly, there's the, the lines of business. We're making these investments to meet specific commercial objectives. And I'll, I'll leave the, the business side alone for the moment for another discussion, but uh, simply note that the availability of these services through the HPE GreenLake model makes private 5G much more broadly accessible than it would otherwise be. From an operational perspective, our goal is to make 5G appear familiar to the enterprise network engineer um, through a common management and common management tools for both legs of the network, um, through data paths that are aligned so they can provide access to the same or common local and remote resources, no matter what radio network you use to connect. Um, and Cellular, enterprise, cellular and enterprise identities need to be recognized across those two systems. So if you have SIM credentials that get you onto the 5G network, the, 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 the local network needs to know that those belong to the same person who has, or the same entity that has um, an enterprise certificate or, or, or connection or credential so that they can get access to the same uh, resources and that are appropriate to their role within the organization. From an end user perspective, and, and here we have to understand that um, end users are, of course, no longer just subscribers carrying mobile phones, but they could be a piece of machinery or a monitor or an actuator, a camera, a control surface, uh, any of those IoT devices. Um, so we have to consider um, that many of these devices will have both a cellular and a Wi-Fi radio on in them, that they will both be active typically at the same time. Um, and a lot of these devices will be mobile. So we need to make sure that there's seamless mobility and continuous service across the networks, that the networks have to anticipate and orchestrate handover events as the devices move through them, rather than just um, letting them happen and hoping for the best. So there's a lot of coordination between the local um, Wi-Fi leg of this um, system and the local private 5G part of the system that's not typically part of the relationship today between a, an isolated or an island of Wi-Fi coverage in a business and the surrounding macro network. Um, we also have to provide visibility and consistency of quality of service across these networks. So before a handover happens, the network that a device is on needs to know that the resources um, that it's using are available on the other leg to support this active service. Um, so those are the sort of challenges from the um, operational point of view, trying to make Wi-Fi look or 5G and Wi-Fi look as similar as possible to the network administrator and continuity of service from the um, from the subscriber or the end device point of view. OK, thanks, Stuart. Uh, and Lee, this coexistence of Wi-Fi and 5G connectivity, this sounds pretty important for enterprise users. Certainly, I mean, uh, you, you have coexistence, uh, cohabitation, collaboration, uh, you know, any of the types of uh, uh, interworking activities that are necessary as you bring two networks together. Right? Uh, and, and that's essentially it, uh, two network types uh, coming together, as, as we've seen throughout the industry, even beginning uh, in, in 3G type of realms. Uh, and, and you'll see that within 5G that uh, there are very specific standard components uh, that have been designed, been defined by uh, the standard development organizations uh, of which, you know, within our private 5G stack, we're, we're perfectly uh, capable of supporting and, and delivering and providing uh, to the end customer base. But as, as you heard from Stuart, there are many other types of cohabitation, collaboration, uh, uh, a cooperative uh, type of efforts that need to take place between uh, the networks so that you bring two networks together to make it one for the end experiences themselves. And that's where HPE really does uh, have the, the kind of advantage in, in the industry of being able to uh, exist between differing type of network types. Uh, we have existed for decades in performing those type of uh, interworking services, uh, both at a manageability level, at a policy level, uh, within identity, entitlement, and security. And all of those have to be considered as you bring the networks together to provide one communication scheme uh, that meets the needs of the enterprise and the business case. 
And it's, it's not heavy lifting. It's, uh, in fact, very practical work that brings the two industries together uh, to make it a seamless experience for the end user. Okay, so this all sounds very important for enterprises. So where is HPE right now on this journey? Uh, Stuart, let's start again with you. Yeah, well, um, we're quite deep into it. This, this week at Mobile World Converse, we'll be launching our private 5G solution based on all of the ideas that, um, that Lee and I have been discussing. Uh, and we have a number of active customer engagements um, with, with service providers, with private and public sector um, enterprises across a wide range of different vertical markets, everything from healthcare to, uh, to heavy industry. Um, maybe um, Lee can talk a little bit about the work that we're doing also in the HPE 5G lab, where we've been integrating uh, Wi-Fi and the uh, 5G service and sort of working through all of these mechanical problems of making these networks work together. Okay, great. Well, Lee, let's come to you for those details. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, at our lab in Fort Collins, uh, we announced it uh, last year. Uh, the uh, lab in Fort Collins is our 5G lab. We're, we bring together partner components as well as HPE uh, components, uh, areas that we are uh, skilled at. And as Stuart indicated, we're, we're bringing those together with Wi-Fi environments and working through some of the more uh, rudimentary use cases and then getting to the more elegant use cases that are possible uh, in, in terms of predictive mobility and uh, you know, very refined handover techniques that are going to be necessary for you know, highly, highly tuned uh, 5G use cases. So it's important to cover the gamut. It's important to understand the manageability characteristics. It's important to understand what is unique uh, about the communications technology itself that makes it a, an advantage for an enterprise, and then how that ties into underlying compute technology. Uh, again, keep in mind that HPE you know, runs the full field of edge to cloud to uh, core uh, functionality in terms of servers, in terms of gateways, and in terms of end-to-end uh, -end, you know, private 5G stack uh, uh, offers. So all of that's coming together, uh, not only in Fort Collins, but in other parts of the world, uh, where we are uh, performing active engagements uh, with our private 5G core stack. Okay, so there's a lot of interest right now in private wireless networks. What is the next step for enterprises and service providers that are interested in private 5G network deployments? Stuart. So the, the sort of entities that would be interested in that, they, they cover a really broad spectrum um, from levels of sophistication, but also use case requirements. Um, and our private 5G solutions as a result come in a wide variety of, of flavors or configurations. So for um, a customer who has a relatively straightforward set of requirements and, and, and doesn't really want to learn how to run a cellular network, we have a complete network in a box. Um, at the other end of the spectrum, there are um, enterprises who want to be able to manage and turn every lever to finally um, configure a network to their specific needs. So we have um, uh, cloud-based management models that support um, support those uh, as well, so that you know, any any customer can find the right mix of these technologies um, in our portfolio, and we just need to reach out to us. Um, we've got many of these uh, engagements going on right now, as Lee mentioned. Um, some at a trial phase, some at a commercial deployment phase. Um, so the, the next step would really be to contact us or to visit us at the um, HPE website, hpe.com slash 5G um, to learn more about these solutions. Yeah, uh, exactly right. right? Uh, we, we've got within HPE a, a very, very large program around 5G, around the development of uh, communication technologies uh, to suit the evolving enterprise needs. As I mentioned before, there's a, a variety of different use case types that are associated with uh, evolving enterprises. And some of those use cases do, of course, engage uh, more of a need towards 5G technologies to be able to support uh, whatever is being desired, you know, typically in you know, deployable type of operations like uh, governmental services, smart factories, uh, and the like. But there are also uh, enterprises that simply have basic communication needs and they want to increase the capacity. They want to utilize 5G as an opportunity to be able to be a neutral host as well as offer simple connectivity services to their uh, existing subscriber base. So there's a wide variety of communication needs, of compute needs 
that are engaged in the development of an enterprise use case as we move towards uh, more futuristic type of environments. And 5G is not a means to an end, of course, to be able to support that. That's why Wi-Fi continues to be an extremely important, uh, advantageous uh, communications technology. Now, again, 5G can cohabitate, it can collaborate, it can cooperate. Uh, all of those dynamics need to be considered as you're performing your communication assessment to develop your use cases. And HPE has been in the business for a while, for well over three decades in the communications business. And of course, we're well, well known in the compute business. And so we can help enterprises. We can help them gauge what they need to do today and how they need to scale and grow for tomorrow. Well, it's good to hear that it's not a one size fits all there and that HPE can leverage the experience it has to bring this to market. Uh, Stuart Lee, thanks very much for joining us today and telling us about you know, what is one of the hottest topics in the industry right now. Thanks very much. Thank <laughs> you.